Alright guys, I want to welcome you all back to some more of the house in Fata Morgana. We're going to continue on from where we last left off after the huge truth bomb that Nelly decided to drop on us and continue on from there. So I hope you all continue to enjoy watching and let's do this. Alright guys, we are back. Though I shout for her to stop, she continues to run. The rain is so heavy, I'm afraid I might lose her. I'm terrified. But... But I didn't do anything wrong, did I? I'm begging you, please stop. I just want to talk. She comes to a stop at a corner. Please do not go around this corner. It's you, isn't it? I am sorry. Why are you apologizing? What I said back there was terrible and for that, I am truly sorry. I didn't realize it was you. Please, come back to me. If you're concerned about social status, I'll figure something out. And Nellie's getting married off soon enough. Oh, yes, Nellie. Nellie did something horrible things to you. Sorry, Nellie did some horrible things to you. Sh she's lost her mind. She was talking nonsense. But don't worry, she'll be out of the picture soon enough. Oh, come on. Don't say that guy. I'll make sure you're safe. Say something, please. Are you angry? You're angry, aren't you? I am not angry at you. I'm not. Did you know everything? Did you come to our house aware of everything? What? Did you? Tell me, please. The priest isn't around. Everything Nelly says is a lie. You're the only one who will tell me it's not true. What are you... Our relationship? I don't understand what you're saying. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. You don't know. You don't know. It's for the best. <laughs> uh. Nelly's the only one who knows and she'll be gone before long. Everything will be alright. Lord Mel. It'll all be alright. Let's go back. I'll make sure you're never put in danger again. I'm begging you, stay with me. My appearance is no longer suitable to stand at your side. You saw how unsightly I am back by the church, did you not? Hair can grow back. That's not a problem. Now I truly look the part of the hideous witch. But I am to blame. It was a sin for me to find happiness in your kindness. What are you talking about? Your... My sin was falling in love with you. Not what happened to my father, nor how we had to spend our days. There's no sin in that. We have our whole lives ahead of us. Don't we? With enough time, this whole tragic mess will be behind us. Things will only get better from here. I'll be your prince, like the one who took the girl to see the outside world. So please, give me, give me your hand. Come to me. Don't leave me all alone. I need you by my side. Please. I extend my hand around the corner. I sense her hesitating beyond the bend. I'm begging you. I can't see what's on the other side, but a vision of her reaching out to put her hand in mine wells up in my mind. But. That story never had an ending. What? She doesn't take my hand. I doubt the girl ever wrote that letter. Ah. She's not there when I turn the corner. Why? How did things end up like... Like this? Where did I go wrong? Oh, God. Now, I can tell you where you went wrong the moment you started messing with the moment you start neglecting your sister, man. Wow, well, look how convenient that is. The maid is just there. Your error was likely your kindness. Thoughtlessly, haphazardly spreading your generosity. But that generosity came from your own desire to avoid pain. For your own happiness. I... I... 
What should I have done? I can't take this. Everyone, everyone was happy. Nellie used to laugh and smile. She once meant the world to me. How did things end up like this? It's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. If you pretend like nothing happened, then perhaps they can go on smiling in your head. Oh, <laughs> ouch. But regardless, you must follow the path you tread. It is your path alone. The path you chose when, in that moment, you decided to run. Make the wrong choice in those moments, and you shall find yourself on the road to ruin. I would have been better off not knowing. Better off in the dark. I just wanted those tranquil eyes to last. Tranquil days, if I read eyes. <laughs> they were supposed to last forever. At some point, your childhood must come to an end. And that ending may not be the one you anticipated. I can't stand this world. You yearn for a world that would treat you with kindness. What should I do? What should I have done? Someone, please, help me. You should return now. If you spend too long out here, you are liable to catch a code. Now let us return to our own time. Okay, so I am Mel. That's the kind of thing. The crestfallen young man faded into the distance, and the decrepit double doors clacked shut. Through the shattered glass, you could see only the ruins of a garden, not a single rose growing within. You had evidently returned from the past. In the garden, weeds grew taller than people. You found it difficult to look at. A wolf howled in the distance. The children, the sea of roses, and the white-haired girl were nowhere to be found. You and the maid who called you Master were the only people present in the mansion. What happened to them next? Oh, Master, you would know better than I. <laughs> My, you cannot remember? It seems this is quite serious then. Worry not, my loyalty lies with you, Master. The mansion has witnessed more yet. Let us make our way to the second door. Your hand in hers, the maid guided you back through the kitchen and into the tea room. Her palms were still cold. You felt as though you were clen clenching ice. Master, do you wish to know the truth no matter what may be hidden within? Well, so far the thing I've- <laughs> the biggest reveal so far that I, uh, that I learned is that the white-haired girl is my real sister and I don't know who Nelly is. Or, Nelly may be... Um, no, that still makes no sense. I don't know who Nelly is. Or, if it is something you would be happier not knowing, would you rather remain in the dark? Oh, is that so? I wonder about their father. Yes, the flaxen-haired sibling's father. Do you think he knew about the white-haired girl? If he did, then perhaps he allowed her to stay because of how deeply he loved his wife. Or maybe because he did not want people to find out about her. I expect he too experienced many different emotions. But those pages of his story remain untold. Their parents likely had a turbulent tale as well, but theirs is not, a, not of consequence. To whom? I could not tell you. You and the maid crossed through the entrance hall, continuing your trek. At some point, the fire in the fireplace had faded to embers, emphasizing the lack of light within the mansion. The maid took a candlestick and lit it in the cinders. The small flame illuminated her pale face. On a whim, you asked the maid about herself. About me? I am a maid devoted to your service, master, as I have said. Oh, what was that? You are interested in my name? Yes, I actually am interested in your name. I'm also interested in the white-haired girl's name. I hope I learn both in time. Or maybe even now. <laughs> you flatter me. I truly do appreciate the question, but you are more than welcome to simply call me the maid. Oh, oh so much for getting her name. Maybe if I know the witch's name, it would be a detriment to her, uh, to her uh, existence. I don't know. I know names are important uh, in these types of uh, stories, especially supernatural or uh, fantastical. Also, it would make me much happier to hear you say my name after you have recalled who you are, Master. 
or we can wait until the very end when I remember truly who I am. Because I thought I'm, I was Mel. I think I'm Mel. A subtle smile rose to the maid's face after which she began to lead you down a first floor corridor. Still holding the maid's hand, you passed in front of a full length mirror. In it reflected the warm light of the candle, which disappeared out of range shortly thereafter. Oh my, is something the matter? Did you come across something peculiar? <laughs> the maid had not appeared in the mirror. Oh, well, there you go. She's a witch. Or a vampire. Or maybe both. Though she was not the only one without a reflection. Well, you're a spirit, so... I... <laughs> you reached the end of the corridor. There appeared to be a doorway, but the door itself was long since gone, leaving only a hole in the wall to frame the stairs behind. Without hesitation, the maid descended into the darkness. You have more interest in this mansion, master, than in a mere maid, do you not? Though it pains me to say as much in your presence, master, this house is cursed. Yes, it is a curse that runs deep. As you just bore witness to, the majority of those who dwell within these walls fall into misfortune. I have served here for many years, and periods of happiness are as fleeting as a sugar cube in a cup of hot tea. Okay, now I'm even more convinced she's a witch. She served for how many years, she said. And she still looks like that? Why did such tragedies befall them? If I were to guess, Master, it was because you had not returned. But when you remember your true self, the mansion's curse should be broken. The next... <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. The next door is before us. It appeared to be the entrance to a cellar. The disconsolate wooden door was visibly rotten in several places and it seemed it might crumble at a single touch. <clears throat> you could hear the sound of something devouring meat beyond the door. Maybe there was a beast living within. Before you had a chance to say you thought it was dangerous, the maid opened the door with a chilling smile on her face. Your first impression was that it smelled of blood. Where is this lady leading me? The second door. Oh, okay. So each door, different timeline. 1707 now. Look at this. The mansion sat in ruins in that era. Not a soul resided within. The grandeur of the house was lost to the ages. It was in perpetual decline. Not a flower grew in the garden. Dust and dirt blackened the plaster. Cobwebs blanketed the corridors. Ivy shrouded the outer walls. It was not a pleasant sight. As hard as I tried to fight it, I could not stop the mansion's descent into di disrepair. The death of the previous owner's grief, or perhaps despair, was far too much. So the mansion is also connected to the owner himself. After the beautiful flaxen-haired family, people stayed away from the mansion. They had no heirs, so the bloodline simply vanished into the depths of history. It had been about 50 years since the house last had a resident. Ooh. The forlorn property appeared as though it had been abandoned for centuries, and the occasional villager who stumbled upon it did not remain there for more than a day. My time there was rather solitary. That was perhaps the loneliest time of my life. Everyone who visited the mansion feared it, and it was left without anyone to become its master. I even came to believe that my time serving as a maid would come to an end in this era. However, one day, I noticed something out of the ordinary. As a servant of the house, I am almost immediately aware of any new presence within its walls. Okay, so I'm also off the brief now. My theory is, this witch slash maid cannot survive without the mansion because so far, she's been in that mansion even when there was no one in it. Even when her the people she served have disappeared or passed on, I guess. And there appeared to be someone downstairs. Can you imagine just how delighted I was? Though part of me was anxious about what kind of person I might find, the possibility that it could be you had my heart aflutter. So what's so important about me that you've been waiting for me for so long? So, resisting the urge to rush, I headed for the basement. The cellar was where red wine, smoked meat, and other preserved foods were kept. By that point, the wine was practically antique. As I had expected, a man had made his way to the cellar. Is anyone there? Although I am unsure, referring to him as a man is entirely accurate. Oh my, this is quite something. Oh, what is that? 
The very first thing I sensed was an almost unbearable stench. The odor emanated from the man, heightened by the food he had carelessly rummaged through. Blood, wet, blood red liquid spilled from wine barrels soaking the floor. His sunken eyes had a piercing wolf-like glimmer in them. His teeth were sharp and yellow, visible as he ripped into a chunk of meat. He grumbled in a seemingly inhuman tongue. I was looking at a beast. Uh, oh, or perhaps a half beast. There was another source of odor in the room though. It had something of a kind of metallic tinge to it, and when I noticed this, I nearly passed out. The red liquid was not just wine as I had assumed. The beast had, I presume, stolen a weapon from the village. A sword far too nice for him to lay on the floor by his side. I could hardly imagine how many people's lives he had taken with that blade. It was visibly wet with blood, even in the darkness of the cellar, but at the same time it had an imposing gleam. The fine luscious aroma of the wine could not mask the stench of blood in the beast. Holding my breath, I took a few moments to ponder. Ponder what? Oh master, you know. Tell me, were you summoned here by the mansion? Yeah, I don't speak that, uh, tongue. Did you come here knowing what kind of place it is? Ah, uh, yeah, don't understand. Oh, it seems like the maid does, though. If you, are in, if you are in one of money, you are welcome to help yourself to some of the furniture. And I imagine the, village, the villagers would be willing to welcome you if you dressed yourself up a bit more like a person. Then you can trade the furniture for food and make your way to a larger town. The wolf was able to fool the innocent little girl simply by putting on clothing after all. The maid is very accommodating towards this malevolent spirit of sorts. Oh dear, I was afraid you wouldn't understand me. What am I to do? I was in quite the predicament. Nevertheless, it meant a great deal to me then that I had found someone who did not fear the mansion, but they human or beast. So I decided I should give him my assistance. Why? While doing my best not to agitate him. Say, could you perchance be my new master? Oh, this can't be good. The mansion sat near the ocean. To say it was perched upon a cliff might make it sound rather intimidating, but you could see the beautiful clear sea through the windows, and glittery expanse of emerald and turquoise. If the mansion had been in a proper condition, it would have been breathtaking against the backdrop. I even wanted to plant orange trees in the garden. Though it was a tumultuous era, the sun still shone bright upon the land, which only served to emphasize the house's unsightliness. Oh yes, perhaps I should give you some more background information. Yes, that would be important. At that period in time, a war had just drawn to a close. The once gorgeous wetlands were infested with crows, picking at the king remains. Bodies of soldiers fallen in battle continually washed up on the shores of coastal villages. The people want nothing more than for the curtain to draw on that deeply political contest. And when it finally did, the kingdom, with its richly fertile shores, was stripped of its independence, beginning a new era under a new rule. The people were exhausted, their spirits wasted away, and the splendor of the ocean and sky did nothing to help. In my mind, the beast was emblematic of the times, emaciated and enveloped in the scent of blood. But the war came to an end. Thus, the beast did not have to remain a beast, I thought. Did he? And so I endeavored to make the beast more human-like. Oh, this can't be good. First, I needed to do something about his appearance. I would draw a bath, scrub away all the filth, and dress him in clothing left in the mansion. However, having sat unused for 50 years, the majority of garments had been devoured by insects and were of little use. So I searched the mansion top to bottom for anything the beast could wear, heated up some coals, and set to work ironing what I found. At the time, steam irons had not yet been invented. We used plates of iron heated with coals. They somewhat resembled kettles. I even prepared meals for the beast in order to teach him proper table manners. The fact that the beast was even willing to learn all this. <laughs> okay, I'm surprised he didn't hurt her. Although with the mansion in nearly uninhabitable state of disarray, there was only so much I could do in the kitchen. And the only supplies I had to work with were what was left in the cellar. 
As such, I was not able to put to use the cooking skills I had learned in the flaxen-haired family's time. Now, now, you mustn't eat with your hands. Do you want to get your fingers and face dirty? I'm guessing she's going to teach him English too. You eat using a knife and fork. See? Like this. <laughs> I feel like I'm teaching a young child. Oh, he did not like that. Oh my. What are you holding your head for? Oh dear. Perhaps I should be teaching you to speak before table manners. Were we not, we have plenty of time. You need act so frightened. That's him being frightened? Or perhaps you do not want to under be understood. Oh, or perhaps you do not want to be understood at all. Would you be so kind as to tell me your name? You are, for now, still a guest. It is too soon for me to call you master. Or am I mistaken? Your name. That is what people call you. How about I start by telling you my name? I am called. Oh, he's about to say something. Something with B-E. Bestia. Bestia? Bestia. Bestia. Your name is Bestia. <laughs> I see. Then that is what I shall call you, Bestia. My, you seem to be rather perplexed as how I was still alive. He had, in fact, attempted to cause me harm. However, I am a servant of the house. <laughs> the beast called himself Bestia. It is a curious thing. When I learned his name, he seemed to take on a new importance in my mind. He was not a mere beast, but the thing called Bestia. Master, should I ever have the chance to hear your name, I am certain you too shall become more substantial a presence. But you must always remember, Master, that even if you do not remember your name, and even if you never know mine, you have always held a special place in my heart. Okay, then I'm also- now I'm, I'm so confused. I'm thinking I'm Mel, but if he doesn't remember his own name, then that means it might not be Mel. And thus began my tranquil days with Bestia. Slowly he began to learn the human tongue. And I was, to be quite honest, rather thrilled. To be certain, I was afraid of the beast. But my fear was not so strong as my elation that there was someone else in the mansion, someone to whom I could speak. And someone that might become my master. Come now, you must pull weeds out of the roots or they will soon grow back. This is a task that requires perseverance. You do, you do it like this, see? There you go. <laughs> Grass. Oh, did you not expect that? <laughs> what appears to be many plants on the surface is actually all connected within the soil. This is a task that requires a man's strength. If there were other servants, they could do it. So I apologize for making you tend to the garden, future master. Or perhaps now that you are all dressed up, do you wish to leave the mansion and find someone to fool, as the wolf did the sweet little girl? Have you no interest in remaining in such a disheveled house? Mm, I don't know what NT means. Go on. Oh, not want leave. He doesn't want to go. Oh my, is that so? <laughs> if you wish to stay, then I shall not stop you. On the contrary, I will gladly attend to you. I am waiting for the person who is to become my master forever waiting. I should be able to watch over you until the day you depart this world, old and wrinkled. Do you not believe me? <laughs> Are you interested in becoming the master of this house? Oh, he is convinced he will be. I have to wonder if you know what you are saying. Although it, although it matters little whether you do or not. Oh my, look at that. Now this brings back memories. This is called a rose. Do you know what a rose is? It is a type of flower. N not no. Do not n no. 
I see. Then allow me to teach you. What you have here is not a real rose. The real rose is wilted and are sleeping in the soil. This is called an accessory. It is something women wear. The beast held an ornamental white, white rose in his hand. An object someone sometime meant to give to someone else. Curiously, the white rose was just as stunning as it had been the day it was made, despite being buried in the earth for so many years. I hear roses make wonderful gifts. He stared intently at the decorative rose. I presume the beast would either discard it disinterestedly or destroy it. But much to my surprise, Bestia held it gently in his hands, as though it were something precious to him. Are you, perchance, considering giving it to me? So you are not. Very well. Is there someone else you would like to give it to? In that moment, a thought floated through my mind. The thing I had found in a pool of blood in the cellar was a monstrous creature indeed, but perhaps that was not, at his core, what he truly was. So I asked him a question. What is that you desire, Bestia? The, this mansion fulfills people's desires. If you yearn for something, what do you want? Ah. Okay, you know what? I thought he was evil. He might be a good dude. Look at that filthy thing. A beast. It's a beast. It's eating goddamn sand. You really that hungry? Beast, you foul creature. Stay the hell back. Get any closer. Filthy beast. And I'll kill you. Several days passed by. As Bestia began to act more like a person, the mansion followed suit, slowly becoming more habitable, though not yet back to its former glory. No flowers grew in the garden, but neither were there weeds infesting it. The dusty corridor shattered windows, rust-covered kitchen gradually returned to their proper states. Bestia learned how to change his own clothes and how to draw a bath. No longer did I have to wait on him hand and foot, he could take care of a number of things all by himself. But we lacked for food he acquired from the forest. Never did he go to purchase supplies from the village, rather he captured hares and gathered herbs hidden in the overgrowth. They were days without incident, and though such a life may be one for excitement, peace is something that you mustn't take for granted. Those who have it cast aside, finding the leisurely flow of time dull. Only those who have never experienced it truly know how precious it is. Bestia appeared to be content. He wore an expression of solitary serenity. Someone? Is anyone there? And then one day, a crack formed in the uneventful tranquility. Is anyone in there? Could you part with some food? I don't need much. Some food and water. Just a little. That's all I need. Bestia looked over at me as if seeking my aid. Ironic, no? It was the visitor who was truly in need of aid. I pondered it for a few moments, deciding that I could not simply turn away someone calling upon the mansion. Had Bestia ordered me to not let him in, I would have followed his instructions, but he said nothing. Oh, thank God, someone's here. I was afraid it was, de I was, afraid it was deserted. You said you were in need of a sustenance? Yes. It doesn't have to be much. Anything to quench this thirst. I got lost, and it's been several days. Give me a few more minutes, and I will find him. Let him in. A firm, deep voice came from behind me. I was quite startled. When had the beast learned to act so much like a human? When had he learned to speak so clearly and to behave so much like a master? Uh, upon seeing Bestia, a look of terror appeared to cross the wanderer's face for a moment. To my eyes, Bestia was the very image of a head of the of house, but to an outsider, he probably appeared to be nothing more than a beast in man's clothing. Prepare him a meal and a bed. I suspect he is quite tired. Well, my guy here knows how to speak proper now. T thank you very much. But in time, the fear drained from the man's face. Bestia sat precariously on the border between man and beast. Though he still had his doubts, he, the wanderer revised his first impression deciding Bestia was human. As the wolf had fooled the little girl in the forest, he too had succeeded in playing the role of a man. I thought I was a goner for a while there, but you really came to the rescue. And a meal like this on top of that? You really didn't have to. Though I guess that's not an appropriate thing to say as I'm eating. <laughs> what kind of meat is this? Hair. 
It's damn tender for a rabbit. And here I thought it was beef. You have quite the skilled chef. <laughs> oh, is she the one who cooked this? Is she your wife? Oh no, I am merely a servant. A female servant, huh? Don't see that very often. This mansion is just full of surprises. I can hardly believe it. Lost for days and as soon as I think I'm dead, there it is. Thinking back on it now, it's a miraculous. But why are you two living alone in a house on a cliff? We. Oui. Oh, I beg your pardon. Asking so many questions without telling you about myself. My apologies, just a little too excited to finally see other people. I'm a merchant. I do international trade. Until a few years back, spice exports pretty much all came from one place. But now that we've established trade routes of our own, my country's fighting tooth and nail to push its exports. And in fact, some have lost a few teeth in the fight already. But that's just how it works. It's a cutthroat world. You do what you must to survive. That's just how it works, the merchant said, a sorrowful look on his face. He was quite clearly putting on a shell though. Confidence in himself and in his homeland radiated from that man. I came to this land to do business. Alright guys, I'm going to have to end the video here for the day. Thank you all for watching. Until the next one.